You asked for it, you got it. Is the pencil mightier than the pen? This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're gonna to compare the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, though it sort of applies to the 9.7 inch as well, versus the new Wacom Mobile Studio Pro at 13.3 inch. That one's also available in 16 inches, and you can generalize the same things pretty much apply to it other than size and weight things. Which is better for drawing? Which is better for the professional? We're gonna find out now. So here you have two really lovely tablets that are fantastic for art. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro is the latest iteration of their all-in-one tablet with a PC inside, a Windows 10 PC, powerful 28 watt dual core CPU and a QHD display, matte IPS, high color gamut. And then we have the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, been around for a while, maybe Apple's gonna refresh it soon. They'll probably give it the, the, the higher color gamut display that the smaller 9.7 inch model has is my guess, and maybe update the CPU, I'm sure, in fact, they will with the latest 18, 10 CPU, but other than that, I'm sure it's gonna work pretty much the same as it does. So, iPad Pro starts around $800. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro starts around $1,500. We have the $2,500 model, which is the top of the line in the 13 inch. It's also available in the 16 inch. The iPad Pro, you only get 32 gigs of storage and Wi-Fi only for that $800 price. So the prices go up if you want more storage or if you need LTE inside. Both of these are self-contained computing devices. That means you don't have to plug them into anything else for them to work. They have their own CPUs, their own RAM, their own storage, all that sort of thing. So they really do directly compete in the art market. And you know what? The cliche thing would be to say, well, if you need desktop programs, Photoshop, Illustrator, Corel Painter 2017, um, Sketchbook, I wouldn't say so much because there's a pretty good version of Sketchbook for the iPad. So that actually is available there. Well, the argument would be then you really have to have the Wacom. But let's take a look at AstroPad. Also been around for a while. And that's what allows me to draw in Photoshop, for example, or Corel Painter 2017 or Illustrator. So right here, I have Adobe Photoshop running on my 15 inch MacBook Pro 2015 edition. Sorry, I'm not buying that 2016 model. And this is mirroring off of a 4K display that I've hooked up to the Mac. So that's a lot of oomph. This is connecting over Wi-Fi. The Mac is about 30 feet away and one floor down from where we are. So there might be a little bit of lag, but it's honestly pretty usable. I've got my menus over here in Photoshop. I can actually use them. Isn't that cool? What's not gonna work is keyboard commands. I hooked up my iPad Bluetooth keyboard to this and AstroPad just completely ignores it. It's just going with touch. So this is really primarily for interacting with the pencil or with touch. So I can do things like zoom, into my sunflowers, I can go in here. So say I painted this on, you know, the iPad, and then I wanted to do some finishing touches, some things that are much better done in Photoshop because you've got such wonderful layer controls and masking and all that sort of thing, which to a certain extent are available on the iPad, but not as abundantly. Maybe there's some favorite brushes that I have here. Well, I can do that. By default, what it does is it shows you a little magenta cursor where you're drawing. You can turn that off if you want, if you don't need that as an aid. It's very precise, it works well. Obviously, file management is the is the big bug, bugaboo for the iPad because, well, what's the deal there? You know, getting things on and off the iPad, it's gotten better, but it's still not ideal. So this way, this file is on my Mac. When I save it, I have it there. If I want to open this up in my next program on my Mac later on, when I'm done touching up, I can do this. So pretty sweet. So yeah, after a fashion, you can actually use desktop programs. That's not what I call terrible lag. Let's just do, oh God, that's a nasty thing to do right there. There's not a whole lot of lag going on my poor painting. And there it is. And I've destroyed my painting in real time that's actually on my Mac using AstroPad. That said, why not just get a product that actually natively runs Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, ZBrush, all of those programs that you know and love. If you're a professional artist, that's gonna be attractive. You already have a workflow, you're probably expected to deliver files in certain formats, and you know, you can actually do PSD exports and stuff like that on the iPad too. It's not impossible, but you've got the, the flow going right here. Now, one thing the iPad does have as an advantage though is using Photoshop on a 13 inch screen is just a, more than a little bit crazy making because the palettes and the UI, especially because it's now scaling nicely here, it's not minute, this is Adobe CC, doesn't shrink down your tools and stuff like that if you have a high resolution display. I'm working on, it's not really a postage stamp, but that's a pretty small space now. 
compared to the iPad that's actually going to fill up the entire screen if you're using a native application. So here's what I mean. This is Procreate on the iPad using up more screen real estate, obviously for the drawing experience. Now the drawback here with Procreate is, and this is a wonderful program, is it's incredibly powerful actually. You've got layers, you've got masking, you've got selection tools and all that sort of thing. There is a pretty big learning curve because much everything is done with gestures, including layer management. If you do a two finger swipe versus a one finger swipe on your layers, you got your layer tool right here. That's not so hard to find. Right. But when you start getting into some of the esoterica, it can be challenging. Brushes, lots of brushes here. There's even, you know, free downloadable brushes. You can go to Procreate's website and look at their forms and you'll see that people have brushes available. So there's a lot of brushes to choose here, but not as many as are available for something like Photoshop or not as many as ship with something like Corel Painters 2017. Nonetheless, I was able to do this. Now I did this, took the under sketch that I did and painted this actually separately on these two programs. And I find my brush, brush strokes are a little bit more expressive so far actually on the iPad. And that's the thing about this. And it depends on the program you use because it depends on the brush engine. But overall, I find that the brush expression is more there's no other way to put it, but artistic often that what I envision to be doing feels a lot more like what would happen if I was working with natural media in the end. So really nice experience for drawing and painting. Thank God for Procreate. I don't know what would have happened to the iPad Pro when it comes to artists otherwise. That says, say you like Autodesk Sketchbook. Well, they have Sketchbook for the iPad. And other than paring down, shrinking the UI a little bit here, rearranging it a little bit, you get almost everything that you do on the desktop. You get your layer management right over here going on and things like the symmetry tool. And there it is. I don't know why they call this styles. This is circles and squares and stuff like that. This is a real time saver. If you want to do something and you need your circle, your square, your straight line and all that sort of thing, you got it right there. The symmetry tool. The only thing that is lacking is the brush selection. Not, not that it comes with a bad selection of brushes because actually that's a pretty nice selection of brushes there, but you can't download and install all the brushes that you can on the desktop version. And I'm kind of a, a a brush junkie. I try out every single brush. I don't end up really using or keeping a lot of them, but I just love being able to do that. The pencil, you have wonderful pressure curves from light to heavy. You've got the fantastic shading. And part of what makes the shading good is the fact that the pencil is like a pencil. So you've actually got something to lean on. So while both the Wacom and this support shading, I find it a little bit more ergonomically natural because of the shape of this. When it comes to the pencil itself, and obviously I've customized this heavily to make it my own. I put a clip on here. I have a slick wrap on here to make it more grippy. The thing is a devil, it's slippery. The nice thing about it is you can hold it in a variety of ways. This is pretty nicely weighted. So if I'm doing painting style, I actually hold it like I would a paintbrush and use more of my shoulder, that kind of thing. So you can hold this any way you want. There's no grip, there's no nothing. It is kind of heavy. I have long fingers. I do get finger cramps occasionally if I paint or draw with this for long periods of time. Same thing happens if I use a regular pencil for a long period of time. The Wacom pen is ergonomically delightful. It's clearly meant to be held this way. You can still do this though, but it doesn't have the length and the weight. So it doesn't work quite as well that way, but it's very comfortable. It's fatter. If you have long fingers or big hands, this is going to work fine. The only thing is the tip or the nib is like that. So it supports tilt, but it's not quite as when you're trying to draw or paint with it. So here I can do tilting obviously to the Wacom Pro Pen 2 supports that perfectly, but you can, it's just a little bit harder because you still kind of have to keep the tip a little bit in contact. And as you lean over, it gets to be hard, but you still can do the job. So it's just, that's a minor thing. It's just the, the physical design of the pen kind of thing. When it comes to initial force of activation, this thing is even more sensitive than the iPad Pro, which is pretty impressive because the iPad Pro is very sensitive. Now here, you, let's choose a darker color so you can see it better, a darker kind of pen. So. There was a little lag right there, but usually we don't see that. That's pretty funny. Now it's caught up. All right. So sometimes it was just thinking about something. Uh, it keeps up pretty well, but you know what? You're just never, never going to see that on the iPad there. But to be honest, most of the time when I'm working in Photoshop, I don't see this or even in Corel Painter 2017. And that has some demanding brushes. Now for a program like Sketchbook Pro that I, I never see that kind of lag there. And I'm using that handy dandy tool to do this. We're going to make ourselves a cat pronto quick. 
believe it or not, that's going to be a cat. And we're going to connect them over here like this, and we're going to connect them over here like that. We're going to give them ears. We're going to draw pretty fast. So, there's our cat. Oh, he needs a tail. You get the idea. This, this keeps up just fine here. I can do this. Absolutely no problem. So, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about brush lag on this. It really doesn't happen all that often. It used to be a big selling point of the iPad Pro versus the Mobile Companion 2, the previous generation, but here usually brush lag isn't much of an issue. Now what is an issue is just the fact that I'm holding 3.1 pounds right now. You definitely want to use this with the stand. The stand is not in the box. Okay, that's not the end of the world because I was never a fan of the stand they included with the previous generation anyway, but this is something, if you want something that you can take to your, your kid's softball game so you can get some drawing done while, you know, they're slogging their way through the innings, this is pretty heavy and it's designed ergonomically to be used on the desk. It's a mobile product that really is still made mostly for desk use, to be honest, and not carrying it around. The iPad Pro weighs oh, about half as much. It's very thin, it's very light. It's a bit more delicate. I'll tell you that Wacom is a robust piece of hardware with a nice etched glass screen. I don't think it would be easy to break it. This I'm always very careful of. So that, that's the flip side to something that is this delicate, gorgeous, thin, and light. But more portable, yes it is. Right down even to the chargers. You've got a fairly big, actually, for a mobile device charger that comes with the Wacom, and then you've got the teeny iPad charger. And let's talk about battery life. The Wacom at best is about four hours on a charge. The iPad is around eight to 10 hours. So if you need something to go sketching in the field and you don't have access to electricity, that leans in favor of the iPad, obviously. And now, like I said, file management issues have gotten better on the iPad. Programs have gotten more creative at working around it. You can do things like install Procreate brushes directly from a web page, but still, it is kind of a pain in the neck. I use Dropbox. I like this app here, File Browser. It's free. So I can actually connect to our network attached, attached storage. That's our, our cloud storage drive that we have on our network to get to my paintings, to move them back and forth. But, you know, it, it's just not the same thing as having true access to the file system here that have to use these little workarounds. It's not the end of the world, but it's still an annoyance to keep in mind, just like the fact that you don't have USB ports, you don't have Thunderbolt ports here, you don't have an SD card slot on an iPad. So obviously these are both really wonderful tools for drawing and you can achieve much the same with either of them, depending on your workflow. Now, if you want to do 3D work, if you want to do ZBrush work, I haven't seen much of anything that's really that much of a killer app on the iPad Pro. Adobe Illustrator sort of programs on the iPad Pro, not so much. So if you're a vector artist, it's totally Wacom Mobile Studio Pro time. And sure, yes, there is in name Adobe Photoshop mobile version for the iPad. It is kind of pretty lame. I'd rather use Pixelmator. That's a better photo editing program. There's nothing really as good as Photoshop and Lightroom. If you're a professional photographer, you want to use something on the road. The iPad is fine for triage. It's For, for my money, this is, is not a tool that I would use to really try to generate final work from. I would totally want to use something like the Wacom app, just because it has actual real Photoshop and actual real real Lightroom. But for those of you who are just talented sketch artists, digital painters, even if you are working for a company and you want to start some ideas, begin your sketches, and even take them pretty far along the way, the iPad is actually capable enough to tool to do that with a pencil. And honestly, you know, we all started with pen and paper, and you'll see a lot of YouTube tutorials out there from folks who work at Disney and other places, and they're still demonstrating stuff on paper with pencil. So we can adjust to the tools that we have and we can live without the million brushes inside of Photoshop. And I personally think that there are times, for those of you who are actually learning how to do stuff, it's better not to have the crutch of all those fancy dancy brushes like they'll make leaves and trees for you. That's not how you learn how to paint. So for those of you who are actually getting this because you're just getting into the hobby of drawing and painting, maybe you think you want it to be a career, it's both important to use the tools eventually that professionals will use, yes, but it's also important to just learn how to paint and draw. And the iPad Pro, because it doesn't have as much as the fancy dancy stuff, much as Procreate is a very capable app for $6 that has a 275 page manual, gives you the idea about it, there's an argument for each here. So there you have it. The battle has been done. And honestly, I would love to have either of these products if I was doing art and I do like to do art as you have figured out by now. 
The surprising thing is the Wacom Cintiq displays, drawable displays of various sizes going all the way up to 27 inches. Man, they're not threatened at all by Apple's products. No, they're not really. They don't have much competition at all. Dell maybe with the Canvas coming up and the Microsoft Surface Studio is kind of a different thing. But when it comes to the Mobile Studio Pro, the full computer and tablet in a box, the iPad Pro puts up a really good fight. And yeah, you know, I mean, the cliche thing is in the end, do you need those desktop programs to do your artwork with? And that's a very important thing. But as you've seen, AstroPad makes it somewhat more doable. There's, it's still not absolutely perfect, but you, you can use Photoshop, you can use Illustrator using AstroPad. It's a lot thinner, it's a lot lighter but it's still got a layer going between the iPad and the desktop program there. So if you really need those desktop programs, and I think for a lot of you, you know who you are, and from cradle to grave for your content creation, you're married to those desktop programs, certainly the Wacom is gonna be the solution for you. But for those of you who can start sketching your ideas, your paintings, your whatever it is, your cartoons, your comics, on pretty much any medium, and honestly, let's face it, most of us did start on pen and paper, so we're pretty flexible with that, then the iPad Pro really is a very viable tool as well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this video.